the fall season is among us and for Nicole and I that means breaking out our favorite knife set sharpening it to a razor's edge and using each knife to prepare some delicious old world varieties of heirloom squash and pumpkin the most important parts of our life are water shelter and food we love to cook and getting off the food grid by growing, foraging, catching, and now smoking 100% of our own food is our passion. Since we prepare every meal ourselves, our knives are our most beloved and used tool in the kitchen, garden, and ocean. We just received our first Kamikoto Kanpeki knife set, which includes three knives, a 7-inch Nakiri vegetable knife, an 8.5-inch slicing knife, and a 5-inch utility knife. Since Nicole and I love our knives to be razor sharp, we also received the Toishi Whetstone, which has a 1,000 and 3,000 grit side for getting that traditional and high quality edge on your knives. Each Kamikoto knife is made with Japanese Honshu steel. Each knife is individually inspected and goes through a 19 step process and is used by Michelin starred chefs all over the world. There's also a lifetime guarantee and the ashwood box it comes in makes a fantastic gift. Please check out the link in our video description for a nice discount if you would like to check out and order the same knives and whetstone we're using. It didn't hit the ginkgo, did it? No. Cool. How was that, Nicole? That was, uh, that was crazy. <laughs> it was a good cut. It went in where you wanted it to go, but the sound of it going down was intense.
This is like a 30 foot long plank that I'm gonna cut in half and use them in 15 feet, 15 foot pieces. I don't know if the camera can pick up how long that board is out of this Douglas fir. And uh, you know, it's very fresh. You guys saw me down the tree. So I'm not gonna put it like in the yurt where the wood stove's gonna dry the wood out and crack it. I'm gonna use it in outdoor settings so it'll dry slow. It's gonna be used for the roof of the bunkie. We haven't finished that yet. Um, notice I've never shown you the backside of the pizza oven because I haven't finished the roof there. I do have the compost bags you saw me recycle has a waterproof rain membrane. So those are blocking water from getting into the, the structure over the pizza oven. Same with the bunkie, but I gotta put the wood on top of that membrane. So I'm finishing the pizza oven, finishing the bunkie. We're gonna put up a second bunkie and then we're gonna take uh, the rest of this wood and use it to build a, um, a, a smokehouse for smoking our own salmon because the salmon are running right now and then smoke it ourselves the traditional way in a smokehouse using just flame and smoke. You're gonna see that go right there. So I don't know, I'm just, I just feel really good that I do have to go to town and then stock up on gas and I have about seven containers of gas that I number and I rotate through in a cycle so I always use fresh gas. But besides that, it's just my, my muscles that has to make these boards and I know a lot of you in the comments talk about how the price of lumber is so high right now and I'm doing this pretty much for free. And I just, I'm really, I'm really feeling blessed and fortunate that, you know, I've got two really nice resources out here. One of those resources is rainwater um, and then well water. So I have water out here is just a plentiful, beautiful resource and wood. I have, I mean, I'm only really living with Nicole here on two acres of our property of our nearly 20 acres. And just on these two acres, we have unlimited wood forever because by the time we get through one part, the other part will grow again. So we can just, the other 18 acres, we can just preserve it and let nature be how nature's gonna be. And I just love this property a lot. And I'm really happy that this place of my birth in British Columbia, I was able to leave for a while and meet Nicole and then return here as an adult with some skills. And I just feel like I'm supposed to be here. And I just love that nature is giving me water and wood two of the five Chinese elements. So, super blessed.
part of the fun of being out here is that you know, I wake up each day and I just think, how do I want to design something or how do I want to build something? And I have certain resources here. I have unlimited wood, I have unlimited water, and I'm able to find gravel and sand, but not unlimited of that. So it's sexy to build things out of wood because it's all around and it's perpetual. Like by the time that I knock a few trees down and I build something with those trees, uh, the ones next door grow back. So like, you know, even if you have 20 acres and you only draw trees from one of those 20 acres, there's no way that I can use up that full acre. So the, the acreage continues to replenish itself. It's a <clears throat> self-perpetuating cycle of endless wood. With this smoker, I have the logging road, which is ancient, and it slopes low where the natural earth is, and then it comes up. So now I'm at the top of that logging road. We, we built the yurt on the very top of that road, and that's why we don't have a lot of uh, risk of flood damage. I'm not building a very heavy structure. The pizza oven you guys saw me build, the wood-fired brick and cob pizza oven is so heavy. I don't even... I can't even fathom how heavy that is. But this one's not that heavy. It's just gonna be, you know, one or two rows of block and then the wood house. You guys will see if you keep watching. So I'm gonna use the slope. I'm gonna light the fire down there and let the heat rise naturally with the slope. Do I take a bunch of this sand and gravel? I just layer it up really thick to kind of level out the terrain here. And the sand and the gravel will you know, not get washed away because I'm gonna have a roof on this thing protecting it from the elements. And uh, this logging road is so high, we don't get the river effect happening until you go down to the bottom of the logging road. That's where the, that's where the river starts down there, the little stream. Because I want an off-grid method of refrigeration. And I know I have a fridge that's powered by batteries that I charge up with solar panels. So that's off the grid. But this is better because I have unlimited wood. I don't have unlimited sun here. I think I'm just gonna go for it like this. And you guys can troll me in the comments and I'll troll you back by showing you how it's gonna work. <laughs> and it will last for years and years and years and years and years and years. And hopefully I'll have a kid that will learn how to do this and they'll be able to enjoy using the smoker that we build for them and they can add to it or build another one. <sighs> Playground sand?
the mallet. Nice job. Good work, babe. Is it fun doing this together when you have a, a blue wolf audience there? <laughs> yeah. It's like he's sniffing the air for bears or cougars. Seriously. This whole thing's gonna look rough cut because I have no like shop to to mill these out to be perfectly sanded and flushed and nice looking. So like, they're gonna look all rough cut. So. Yeah. And we have to be really careful that we don't walk on any of the of the gravel because there's not enough gravel there. And it's like I can I can see like how just the residual moisture is like really made it soft. And if this all keeps washing away, then I'm gonna lose my foundation. I'm gonna have to bring in more gravel and pile around that like make another two feet of it around so it doesn't keep washing away.
right at the edge. I'm gonna have this like an A-frame house. I'm gonna have one side of the roof super long to make like a wood shed on the right and then the left is just to protect the, the smoker, so. Thing where I measure. Wait, uh, let me just read it again. Okay. 44 and a half. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. 44 and a half, you sure? Yep. All right, ready? Tap yours in so it's like in my position. A little more. Right there. Good. Just to get our bearing straight, it's gonna be like that. Yeah? What do you think? Hey, don't let that fall toward you. What do you think? I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. It looks like an actual thing. Yeah. You mean we're not just building a concrete little box? <laughs> So can you hold this up to it at the same time? Hold this and let, and let go of all this. Okay. Okay, let go of this. Hold that. Thank <laughs> you. 
then the back, and then the top's gonna be the roof, bottom's gonna be open, and we're gonna do all the, the hanging and tray holders on the inside, and then the door. more than this side is done, I think. <sighs> what do you think so far? I mean, it looks good. When I, it's starting to be more structural. When I get everything put together and I get um, complete the frame here, this will be a wood, firewood storage, you know. Mm -hmm. They don't know, you know. Oh, yeah. but once I connect it here, then it will be all one unit, because right now it's like kind of wobbly, but... Okay. And you made these awesome wispy bundles. You look real cute in your jacket. Thank you. I feel short on the downhill here. <laughs> Can you light it and see what happens? Yep. What do you think it's going to work? Um, I don't know, because this isn't enclosed, so yeah. we'll see if it goes... Oh, look, yeah, there's a cup of snow. I mean, I can see it's working. There you go. Wow, it's working.
Go buy them. Two hundred and ten pound man. These are our wispy bundles. Um, we use them to help us start the fire in the morning. Kind of like a little kindling bundle or whatever. Yeah, we just throw one and I mean, it's amazing. They're super dry. I mean, look how thin it is. So it lights really fast and it kind of helps get the fire going. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a squirrel putting away all of its acorns. Instead of acorns, it's wispy bundles. Yeah, well, these are really nice. And I've, over the years, this is my third year doing it, and I've, this is technique has worked the best. So last year, or the first year, I just threw them in there, and it was a hot mess. And then last year, I would wrap them, but I would tuck the, like, I would wrap a, like, a, a wispy around it, and then they would just pop open. So this year, I'm using twine. <laughs> and it looks really nice. It's very orderly. And they won't pop open. Stay.
Here, Puma, you cut it. You do it. I'm done. Come on. So fortunate. Job, well, I have to cover it up. Oh, I know, the filler gaps. It's like a little house. That's your new house. Haha, <laughs> your new house. That's the birthing chamber. What? <laughs> I can't believe somebody would say that. No, it's not the birthing chamber. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's how it sounds every time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So the thing about the birthing chamber is that you have to stay there from month five on. Come on over. Finished door, what do you think? Oh my god. Can I paint it blue? You can do it. You keep I'm painting just everything kidding. blue. I'm painting it was a joke. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. No, I'm not gonna. I think this will look good stained. Or if we take the the torch and show Suki bonnet. But how does that open close? Jail. He likes it. I want to hand this um, board to me for the final hat channel or ridge cap, whatever you call it. <laughs> Do you want it to be level or match up with the other one? <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, the test, what do you think? Let's do that. It looks like it's on fire. Do we need a chimney or is it going to be good with all the gaps I left? No, I think it looks fine. Cool. Let's see. I put something like kind of more smoky in there. Give it a second. Why don't you open it and see what it uh, looks like? Pretty smoky. John. There's a bee down there. I'm using dried sticks right now and some dried cedar. So when I put um, the half wet alder, the half wet wood will create a very smoky yeah. fire in there. Cool. Wow. You did it. What do you think? Is that gonna work? Yeah, they look perfect. Hi, so many people were worried about you in the last vlog because you didn't show yourself at all. So many people are concerned. Like hundreds of comments. Where's the other dog? Kai's fine. He's just lazy. He likes to sit on the patio. All right, load up. Load up. So the shelves inside. We just. We want to hang things. We want to put stuff on racks. Yep. So it makes sense to put the racks, like you said, you said this, put the racks down below in case one of the food items that's hanging falls down, the racks catch it. And then we'll do rods here so we can hang all kinds of like fish fillets. So it's going to be uh, 37 by 15. We're already measured. Hey, that looks great. Let's try to put these in here. Let's see. That's Obviously, cool. you're going to brace those down, right? Oh, of course. And you got this, you got a second one, third one. So hanging up top, what you call this, trays down below? Mm -hmm. <sighs>
putting this little uh, gutter on the smoker so the water doesn't always pool up around it. And uh, I don't feel like going to the well and pumping water and bringing it all the way over here for this mortar mix that I'm mixing up. So check it out. Nature's faucet.
All right, let's see how the smoke looks in there now. You want to go in there? No. That means that there's a lot of smoke. Yeah. Looks good. That's working really nice. Mm -hmm. So we got to put some hanging rods, another tray, a third tray. I got to do some uh, border aesthetically around so that this rock doesn't wash away. And we've got to um, fill it. Yeah, exactly. All right, well, let's go catch him. You ready? Let's fill it up. All right, let's go. In the great forest, there are traces of the old Melodies of the past that we have buried in our souls Deep in the dark unknown, there's a place we call our home The past in our bones, the path will be shown
Okay, so growing up in British Columbia to a Swedish family with Swedish origins, teaching me about fishing and smelts and things like that. I grew up, you know, in Whistler before it was popular, um, salmon fishing in Campbell River, trout fishing in Whistler on the lakes, and then, uh, you know, doing a lot of my life in Arizona, I kind of got away from fishing for a while and spending nearly 20 years of my life as a full vegan. But then coming back here to British Columbia as an adult and choosing this place as my, as my home, I, I wanted to get back to providing for myself and my family from the land, wild foods, herbs, gardening, and the ocean. And we've been so busy with all the amenities, all the infrastructure, yurts and pizza ovens and things like that, that now we can finally start to, um, I would say, have more fun in terms of actually providing for ourselves. I think shelter is very important and water is very important. We have shelter and water. Nicole and I have love. We got a baby on the way. So now it's time to provide food. And uh, I just can't tell you how um, good it feels to be able to you know, go out into the forest and pick wild mushrooms and go out in the garden and pick your own herbs and your own veg and your own fruits and go to a fruit tree and pick your own peppercorns and apples and then go into the ocean and get your own seaweed your own fish, oysters, clams, crabs, prawns. It's just a really good feeling to be able to provide for yourself without plastic, without packaging, without money exchanging hands. Um, I just think it's the most low impact way to live if you can garden for yourself, grow your own food, and if you know the wild foods that are able to be harvested around you. So I'm no fishing expert by any means, hence my impromptu table. And you can tell that we have spent our time you guys can watch it here on YouTube since the beginning, building all this stuff. You know, I haven't yet put together a fish filleting station or fish filleting station. That's coming, so we've got the impromptu one for now. And uh, all the rainwater we harvest, you know, using it to keep it clean because <clears throat> we don't want to have um, any kind of guts hanging around here for bears, cougars, ravens, crows to come check out. You can hear them. They're watching me fillet this salmon. <laughs> so with all of the remnants of the salmon, the head, the skeletal system, the organs. I pretty much got three choices to make. I can take all of the leftovers and I can throw them back in the ocean. Um, I can throw them to the eagles that are in the area or the seagulls, that's the first option. Option two, I can compost them. And really since we've had our compost pile going, we've never had a problem with bears because you know I consider myself an expert at making good compost. You know I use the wood ash, I use the wood shavings as my carbon resource to snuff out any kind of festering smell or rot. And we incorporate all of our food scraps and the seaweed from the area as the nitrogen and micronutrients to really put those carbon nitrogen ratios in a good amount to where there's no smell. You can go to our compost and it creates wonderful soil but really has no smell. Pretty much all gardeners who are successful with fruit trees or gardens, they use fish emulsion and uh, just fermented, you know, composted tea style of fish innards. And it's really effective for growing healthy plants. So pretty much if I add the skeletal system, the head and the innards into my compost pile, I'm doing my own natural, wild, free, very healthy fish emulsion added to my compost. And then I add in my wood ash and I add in my wood shavings to snuff out any kind of smell. So that carbon snuffs it out. But then if we want to close the circle and catch more food, we can also take those salmon heads and right away go put them in our crab traps or into our prawn traps and use them as bait for our prawn and crab or freeze them in a freezer that's powered by a solar panel and then take them with us whenever we're crabbing or prawning. So you can always save them in a freezer in a bag. A lot of locals I've talked to around here do that. They save all their fish, guts, and innards and heads in the freezer and that's their bait. So I'm going to try a little 50-50. I'm going to save some for prawning and crabbing so I no longer have to buy bait from the store and also compost it so that my compost is the healthiest and richest nutrient dense black biodynamic organic compost there ever was to grow more fruit and veg coming up. So we've got a few fish here. There were a couple of uh, nice sized cohos. Since we're so remote we don't really have to go anywhere to fish. You know we just kind of go right outside our door and um, I'm having a lot of fun identifying the salmon as I catch them you know, logging them as per my fishing license and just learning about, you know, whether it's a chum salmon or a chinook or a spring, you know, or a pink. And I'm not saying I'm any kind of expert fisherman. I do okay enough that we're gonna be able to eat really well tonight. And uh, we're gonna fill this smoker right now with garlic from the garden, wild mushrooms, and uh, salmon from the ocean right outside the door. I've heard a lot of people in today's world saying, 
jack of all trades but master of none. And they use it in a negative connotation. And I don't like this because if you go and look at the full quote, it's jack of all trades, master of none, but oftentimes much better than a master of none. And oftentimes when you're a jack of all trades, you can do one or two of those trades at an elite level. And um, I've always loved the martial arts and I've always loved gardening. I've always loved golf and skiing, but I enjoy learning Mandarin Chinese and contracting and building and electricity in terms of clean energy, solar and whatnot. So don't be afraid to get out there and uh, experience new things, fail and succeed. And I think when you're older, you'll be really happy just for the experience, whether it's a failure or a success. I think the experience is really powerful. So we're moving all these pin bones right now and then we're gonna cut them up, get them brined. fridge for like eight hours and then we'll come back. Maiden voyage, experimental smoke. Let's see if it works. Coconut sugared, sea salted salmon. Chanterelles from our forest and then garlic from our garden. Nice. So we'll see how this does and if we like it and then our second wave we'll fully stock it and we'll also try some salmon fillets hung. How long do you think it's going to take? Mm -hmm. 24 hours. Do you think a full 24 or should we use like 36? Or less, like 12? I don't think the garlic will take that long in the mushroom, so it's just up to the salmon, I guess. Well, well we've researched. Well, the salmon's already cured, so it's kind of edible right now. All right, I light the fire.
Hey, what do you think? You guys ready? I think so. <laughs> we had the salmon in there for eight hours. Mm -hmm. And I've done a few little peeks off camera. <gasps> How dare you? <laughs> it's working. Yeah. Mm. So let's take a... It looks beautiful, honestly. It does. Maybe we need to have like a um, a nice processing table for fish before and after built onto this. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, it smells very good. It yeah. feels good too. And we can experiment with different recipes next time, like teriyaki, soy sauce, things like that. Let's put it on here for now. And then garlic done two different ways. Very cool. Mm. And now the chanterelles, you didn't season them or anything. And they, they fully smoked down. Like these ones closer to the back didn't really... Put them back on the dehydration trains inside. For sure. Like I'm sure these are going to be great in soups. They do have a very smoky flavor, uh, smell to them. I'm sure, I mean, a soup sounds really good today. Maybe we could try putting it in a soup or something. Yeah. See how it tastes. Okay, come. Sit. Sit. Spin. Sit. Oh boy. Yay. They like it? I think so, they ate it so fast. <laughs> it's like gone. Okay. Which one do you want me to try? Any of them. Yeah, this one looks good. Now, everything is an experiment from leaving the skin on to the size I cut them to the flavorings to the curing process to all of it. I probably shouldn't have brushed my teeth. What? Just brush my teeth. <laughs> oh my god. What? It's so good. Describe. I don't know how to describe it. It's smoky. It's not too fishy. But you have like that caramelized seasoning over it. And save the skin for the dog. Okay. Mmm. Good job, Dan. But it worked, right? Like, that tastes professional. Yeah, it tastes really good. It just peels right off. Thanks. See ya. <laughs> Yo, Jonathan! Yeah. Alright, Jonathan, meet the YouTube audience and try a piece. Hello. I'm so excited for this. Mm, it's chewy. Good smoke flavor. Oh man. Some <laughs> of the best salmon I ever had. You got a fan club right there. <laughs> They're waiting for that skin. <laughs> you do look very jealous. It's like candy. Oh man. It is like candy. That's, yeah. mm. Spin. Lay down. Wait. Lay down. Wait. Good boy, Puma. Lay down. Wait. <laughs>